So you've got your AppSec folks, you've got your developers, you've got your ops people. It's, it's a lot of different people trying to solve a problem. Um, yes. And we came up with DevOps to try to get the developers and ops team working together. And then I heard the term DevSecOps. And I was like, well, it kind of sounds like security is just being tacked on here. So is there more to it? Is DevSecOps really a thing? Or is it just like the latest marketing buzzword <laughs> so some vendor can sell me a box of security O's? I love it. Um, so it is a thing. However, just the same as, okay, so here's my definition of DevSecOps. So uh, I have this friend named Imran. He's awesome. And I, I was explaining to him like, oh, I'm an AppSec person, but I've, I've mostly worked in like waterfall and agile. And like, I'm moving over to some DevOps and I, I need to know what to do. Like, what is DevSecOps? And he's like, Tanya, it's what we've always done. It's application security, but you just adjust yourself. So you fit in with, with what dev and ops are doing. So mm. I'm like, oh, so if they're using a pipeline, then I want to try to get some time in that pipeline. And if they're all doing their work in sprints, then I need to figure out how to make my security activities fit into a sprint, right? Or I need to give them feedback within that short amount of time of a sprint rather than with a waterfall where it's like, oh, I'll get back to you in six months, right? So <laughs> if they're doing three week sprints, then I need to figure out a way to like test a subset of that stuff and get them results so that they can fix it. I can't tell them like, oh, you know, three months later, here's results for that old code that doesn't apply anymore. No one's interested mm. in that. So it's DevSecOps is sort of, in my opinion, what the security people need to do to adjust themselves so that we can not break all the cool stuff DevOps are doing. Like we, we can't be this giant bottleneck. We can't, like teams there are like, oh, I'm gonna put like this slow SAST tool into the pipeline. It only runs four hours. I'm like, no. You're going to have no <laughs> friends, no friends. You can't do that. Instead, let's figure out a different way to automate this where it's outside the pipeline and then we get the results or we do a subset of the code, et cetera, et cetera, right? So in my opinion, DevSecOps is about the security team adjusting themselves so that they fit into the DevOps processes. Mm. And we help instead of hinder <laughs> that does seem to be the case is a lot of people well at first it was developers want to go fast and break things and ops was like whoa whoa slow your roll there buddy we're ops <laughs> That's and right. we do things at our pace <laughs> so you give that package to me and i'll get it out in a month when it gets to the change review board and then we got ops on board they're like okay okay we'll do this we'll, we'll roll it out we'll do daily deployments whatever whatever it is and then security's like whoa 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 Slow your roll there, buddy. <laughs> You've got oh, some no. stuff we need to put in place. <laughs> Looks like you left a port open there. We're going to have to back this truck all the way up. So now, like you're saying, security is, is getting on board a little bit as well. I I'm curious if you have like a, a real world example where you were in that process or you saw someone in that process. And what does it look like from like the developer writing code to stuff actually going out the door in a real environment? So this is literally what I do all the time. So I'm going to try not to throw a hundred examples. Um, okay. <laughs> but so, so for instance, so let's say you hire a penetration tester to come in and, or a security assessor to come in and they do like this in-depth test of your app, right? So that doesn't fit very well into a DevOps process, but let's say your security team decides to do that, right? Then after they take those results and they fit them in to your sprints. So they're like, these are really critical. This needs to go in the next sprint that you have. And then these are, you know, let, we can put these in the backlog for like the next three sprints, let's say. But what they can do is they can take those results and they can work with the dev team instead of adding those as test. So, so the thing with pen tests, those same developers made those same mistakes all over all your apps or all over all your infrastructure. Right. And so you can take those results and you can turn them into unit tests and then spread them to, so you write them for one app and then you adjust them and spread them to all of the unit tests. So then the developers run those before they check their code in and they're like, oh, I failed this like weirdo test from the security team, damn. <laughs> so then we are getting regressive security testing. Right, so then each time those tests are happening. So then another thing you can do is like, so there's like certain things that just are happening in lots of apps everywhere that are a problem, like cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting is in something like two thirds of apps and it's actually really dangerous. 
Um, and so you can make a bunch of unit tests for that and then again, proliferate it to all of the things. So here you are, you've added a couple seconds to the unit tests, but because mm -hmm. you've copied it across and it, like you will need to do some adjustments, but across all of the apps, you haven't slowed down the pipeline. You've pushed as much left as you can. So it's before it even goes into any pipeline, right? And then you've essentially like regression tested for a whole bunch of security problems. So it hasn't even got into the pipeline. Um, another thing that I've seen some teams do is, so there's a release pipeline and they'll put really emergency security tests in it, like scanning for secrets. So just the new code that goes in, so just the Delta, only looking to see, is there a username and password? Does that look like a hash? Does that look like something that is a secret? And if so, mm -hmm. it breaks the build because that is like the end of the world for the security team. That is a really big expensive deal. So it breaks the build, it automatically triggers the incident. If you can, I have actually seen one example at a conference where they coded it to rotate the secret on the spot which is amazing because like it was checked into GitHub and then they automatically rotated it that fast, which is incredible, yeah. right? So that check will take like four seconds or something in the pipeline, it's so fast. Mm -hmm. um, but then let's say I have super slow tests that I wanna do and I know Dev and Ops don't wanna wait, but I still want them done. So I can make what we call the asynchronous pipeline or like a parallel pipeline. Um, so like I use a lot of GitHub actions and stuff, but I know you can do this in Jenkins and all the other popular ones. So like you, the developer or ops person checks in a change and then it goes, you know, and it runs some of your tests and then it's like, I'm going to push it to dev because it built and it looks good. And it does this and this. We can have another one that goes off to this other security area and I can just have it run 18 hours of tests. It doesn't stop your release. It hopefully doesn't annoy any of you. And then I come in, you know, the next day and then I just like sort through and I'm like, okay, so these three things concern me. So can we talk about those and like getting that into your next sprint? And meanwhile, like I got to have the automation of my test run, right? So like they're automated. So I don't have to sit there and manually do a bunch of crap. I don't like to do things twice. That's why I learned to code. <laughs> and, and so like you can also, for instance, like scan your infrastructure as code. To, to make sure that nothing scary is in there. And then you can work with your ops team to do security as code. So, okay, so you're going, like you're creating these awesome infrastructure as code uh, scripts. Can I look at them? Because I'd like to automatically harden the things inside there. So I want to add a line that closes all the ports except this one. I wanna add, you know, we have this policy that all public facing um, infrastructure is HTTPS only available. And so can we codify this policy into your infrastructure as code? And then like, I'm your best friend. I'm so happy with you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Thank no, you. that's great. And it, it's good to hear that DevSecOps is a real thing <laughs> and not just this, uh, this thing you hear about at conferences and, and somebody can sell you it. <laughs>